Oh, there he is. Much like our AUG H-Bar LMG in a previous video, this Vipertech Colt LMG is a gas blowback rifle converted to serve as an airsoft machine gun. Once again, in this video we're going to take a look at its real world origins, how it was built, how it performs, and how the airsoft clone compares to the real thing. Over the long history of the M16 family, Colt made repeated attempts to convert it to an automatic rifle or light machine gun. Some consisted of little more than M16s with heavier barrels and bipods, while others involved modifications as complex as interchangeable barrels or belt feed. After several failed attempts to market this concept, Colt began the Model 750 project in the early 1980s, and this would be the only variant to see any military success. Externally, this variant had a nearly 1 inch barrel profile with an oversized front sight block, an integral bipod, heavy gas tube, unique handguards concealing a mount bracket for carry handle and foregrip, and a noticeable lack of forward assist. Internally, both the upper and lower were substantially modified to fire on full auto only from an open bolt with a hydraulic buffer to slow the rate of fire to 650 to 700 RPM. Colt submitted them for military trials in the US, while Dymaco, a Canadian company, began manufacture under license for marketing to the Canadian Army. In trials, the gun seemed to be reasonably well received. The heavy barrel allowed for greater sustained fire than a standard M16, the low fire rate made it controllable and accurate in full auto, and a clever stop on empty system allowed for quick reloads without needing to cycle the bolt on a new magazine. However, as mentioned in the last video, magazine-fed automatic rifles have never been particularly popular among NATO countries as machine gun analogs, let alone ones without a quick change barrel. In the 80s, 90s, and even 2000s, most countries were not looking to replace their belt-fed minimis, let alone with a gun that could not provide the same level of sustained fire. Colt did sell a few LMGs to Mexico, but this appears to be that variant's only commercial success. Dymaco would go on to update the LMG with the addition of a flat-top upper receiver, and subsequently a revised bipod and triad rail system, and issue it with the C79 scope and Beta C-Mag as standard. They then also made a variant using a standard closed bolt upper and lower, designated a light support weapon, or LSW, and this version was adopted by both Denmark and the Netherlands. While closed bolt operation is not as suitable for sustained fire as open bolt, it allows the guns to take advantage of the heavy barrel and integral bipod to provide accurate semi-automatic fire, while still having the capability to go full auto if needed. In many ways, this LSW is similar to the USMC's later infantry automatic rifle program, and criticisms of the LSW in Danish and Dutch service are remarkably similar to criticisms of the IAR. It's heavier and more awkward than a standard rifle, but without the sustained fire capability of a true light machine gun. Standard magazines go quickly, while drums are bulky and awkward to carry. Ultimately, it seems the LSW has been quietly phased out of service. So, our project is based on a Vipertech M16A4, and can be configured as either a Dymaco LSW or Colt LMG, albeit with a few concessions. But I'm getting ahead of myself, so let's start at the muzzle. This is an A2 or government profile M16 barrel, but a section of steel tubing has been sleeved over the barrel to bulk it out to the appropriate width, held on by the muzzle device and indexed to the bipod lug. Unfortunately, we have yet to source a front sight block of the appropriate diameter, so the barrel visibly reverts to its actual diameter underneath. The bipod is an A&K steel replica of an M249 bipod, which is close, but not quite correct. We've modified the yoke to more closely resemble that of the real gun, although the leg extension system is still slightly different. The yoke is held to the barrel sleeve and limited in its traverse by a screw which slots into a groove on the barrel sleeve. The handguards are a design we found on the internet, slightly different from the original in that they fit a standard triangular handguard cap rather than the unique square cap of the real gun. We have these handguards 3D printed in nylon via multi-jet fusion, which provides much better durability and surface finish than PLA prints. Going back to the bipod, a pair of hooks we added allow the legs to hook into the handguards, keeping them secure. Underneath the handguard is the bracket that holds in the carry handle and foregrip. This was built from scratch from sheet steel around a short segment of clamp-on rail at its core, with the carry handle arm made from bent quarter-inch steel rod. The carry handle itself, as well as the foregrip, were designed by us and 3D printed through the same method as the handguards. Because it's hidden by the handguards, we did not replicate the thicker gas tube. Overall, no permanent modification or replacement has been made to the underlying M16 parts. The foregrip and carry handle are easily removed, the handguards can be replaced with standard M16 handguards, and the barrel sleeve and bipod slide off once the muzzle device is removed, reverting it to standard configuration. We have two upper receiver setups for this gun. With an A2 upper, it represents the Colt LMG, although note that a proper Colt LMG would not have a forward assist. 
With a standard flat top upper and L can, it represents the closed bolt Dymaco LSW variant. Both the flat top and A2 uppers are real uppers that have been significantly modified to house Airsoft internals and mate with the ViperTech lower, but internally the functional characteristics of the ViperTech system are largely unchanged. We've made some alterations to the lower receiver for compatibility with GHK magazines, but they aren't particularly relevant here, so if you want to know more about how this works, check out our ViperTech review in the description. At this point, you probably deduce that while the real Colt LMG looks a lot like an M16A2 with different furniture, in reality it shares little parts commonality with the standard M16 and there are a lot of differences in the details. We've cut corners in this build both for the sake of using commercially available parts and to avoid permanent modification to the ViperTech parts, but we may revisit this project in the future to correct some of those inaccuracies. As with the AUG LMG though, the most important part of this project was developing a feed system that can provide enough ammo to actually let it function as an airsoft machine gun. In this case, we used an ICS copy of the Beta CMAG intended for AEGs, then rebuilt the feed stack to convert it to gas blowback use. It uses GHK mag internals inside a heavily modified EBTEC mag shell, spliced to a homemade bracket which secures the whole assembly to the ICS drum. The shortened reservoir is tapped for HBA, and the drum holds 2500 BBs. There's a button on the drum to wind it, but I find it easier to secure a pressure switch to the grip and just squeeze it while firing. And so now we get into performance, so let's first talk about handling. While the real one weighs 12.7 pounds unloaded, the fact that we have not fully replicated the barrel profile of the real thing means ours only weighs 9 pounds. With a fully loaded drum, the weight climbs to 13 pounds, which is still very manageable and lower than the real one at 17.3 pounds. The integral carry handle sits just ahead of the center of gravity, which is reasonably comfortable for carry. It seems likely that with the actual barrel profile, this handle would be directly over the balance point. The massive integral foregrip is very good for handling and helps to reach around the drum magazine, but the long length of pull of the A2 stock is designed to be used with a more bladed stance than is typical of modern guns and pushes the weight farther forwards. Of course, there's nothing preventing it from being used with an A1 stock, but only the A2 is accurate to a military issued LMG or LSW. Overall, the handling is more front-heavy than an Airsoft M249, but still nowhere near as heavy or awkward as a loaded PKM, so it's still something I can run and gun with. An interesting piece of trivia is that this adjustable rear sight was originally developed for the LMG project and then reused for the M16A2 program, but that's a story for another day. This rear sight has both a narrow aperture for accurate shooting at distance, but also a wide aperture intended for short-range fire, which for Airsoft use makes it quicker to acquire targets and easier to track BBs through. With the long sight radius of the full-length M16, this has been surprisingly effective as a means of aiming, and allows me to make the most of ViperTech's excellent accuracy and hop performance. Additionally, the carry handle upper supports a variety of optics mounts. So far, I've experimented with the clay Zion mount for a micro red dot, a clone of the arms rail adapter with an aim point 3000, and a Norinco replica of the 3x Colt scope. Of these, the scope has proven the most useful, as the 3x zoom provides a little bit of magnification to help identify targets, but the narrow profile of the scope and fairly generous eye relief prevent it from obscuring my peripheral vision. Most importantly, the mount does not block the iron sights, so it's still possible to engage with them at close range. In contrast, while this G&G replica of an Elcan C79 on the flat top upper has a higher zoom and significantly wider field of view, the width combined with lack of eye relief means it takes up a lot of my vision, reducing my situational awareness. Additionally, the C-79's easily damaged backup sight nubs are downright useless, so the only real solution is to use the QD screws to remove the scope entirely and switch to irons. And most importantly, the glass quality just isn't great to begin with. For these reasons, although I initially built the replica out as a Dymaco LSW, I've come to use it more in the Colt LMG configuration. That may change if, or more likely when, I get my hands on a real C-79 or M145, where the better optical quality over the clone might make the drawbacks worthwhile. Moving on. While the gun can use ordinary GHK or Western Arms spec magazines without issue, in a machine gun role it really needs a large supply of ammo. But more than that, it needs a feed system that I don't need to micromanage. The drum holds about 2500 BBs, so it doesn't need to be refilled often, and with a pressure switch taped to the grip, it's easy to just squeeze to continuously wind while firing. It's not the easiest system to reload in the field, but with 2500 rounds at my disposal, that isn't really a problem. Initially, I was more worried that the air tanks I had would not be sufficient for a day of play, given the high reciprocating mass and spring strength of the ViperTech system. Fortunately, a 90 cubic inch 4500 PSI tank is able to power the gun for about 5,000 rounds, so I'm pretty well covered for most events, and if things get desperate, I can refill to 3,000 PSI via scuba tank. The ViperTech's efficiency definitely helps here. The rate of fire is a standard 850 RPM at 110 PSI, appropriate for a conventional M16, but a bit faster than the actual LMG and LSW, which use a hydraulic buffer to deliberately reduce rate of fire to 650 to 700 RPM. 
We may experiment with a more realistic rate of fire though, as simply removing the short stroke spacer gets it to about 680 RPM without affecting performance or reliability. As we've talked about in our ViperTech review, the hop up in these guns is excellent. My experience has been that outranging riflemen and putting accurate fire on target are crucial for a machine gun, and this gun does both very well. Here's an example. There's a guy in a building about 80 feet away, and he knows I'm watching, so he's crouching below the window. But I can just barely see the top of his head, so I take a short burst, and I got him. It's moments like that that really validate the stock ViperTech hop setup. But probably the biggest surprise has been the comments I've gotten from other players about the sound. ViperTech guns are loud to start with, but sustained fully automatic fire really stands out on a field of AEGs, and in a local field I've actually had people tell me they duck behind cover when they hear me shooting. Well, I suppose if my goal is to suppress the other team, then that means it's working. And here at Explosive Enterprises, we are all about toys with psychological impact. Because an airsoft gun doesn't need to worry about barrel cooling, and because an airsoft drum magazine can hold enough ammo to not require reloading in the field, this replica of the Colt LMG is able to bypass the two biggest limitations of its real counterpart and thus function equivalently to any airsoft replica of a belt-fed machine gun. The rifle ergonomics are well suited to the fast-paced nature of airsoft gameplay, and it is very much a capable performer, so this project has well exceeded our expectations. Well that's all for today, so let us know if you have any questions or comments, and as always, thanks for watching. Any sighting. So it goes.